Hey. Hi. I really liked listening to your record. Oh, thank you very much. I really, and I really tried to do a thing where I, I didn't listen to it while I was doing anything else. You know, I don't get to do this that much anymore. And I really tried to like give myself like nothing else, good, good headphones. And I, it was such a rich, like a rich listening experience. That's good. That's, well, that's sort of what we were going for. Yeah. Like I, we didn't know if many people were going to listen to it that way just because the way people digest music nowadays and little speakers, pardon my French there, but um, I'm glad you did that. Yeah, there was like, because I felt like there was a lot of different kinds of depth and I want to talk about all that. Like there was like a depth of lyricism, of course, you know, and I could, I could really start to feel what you were singing about. And then there was like the depth of the music and the jamminess of the music. But before that, like, just when I was looking into this, I, I said, I feel like for a while there, there was a lot of you. Like, I feel like every year there was something, you would put out something. There was like an Alexis record or the Seating Color record or the record with Alicia, like the, yeah. the, pink, the pink record. And it's like four years before this one. Yeah. So what, what happened there? Well, I think I, I sort of found myself having that same conversation uh, before, uh, after I put out uh, If I Should Go Before You. I was just, you know, I went on tour for a couple of years and then I thought, uh, geez, I've put out a lot of music in the last 10 years, you know, and I didn't, I didn't really have any ideas. That was one thing too. So it was sort of like, uh, I'd kind of found myself not, I wouldn't say like in a drought of, of songwriting. I just wasn't, just wasn't going for it. Every year it was sort of like, it was just, the songs were just there in a way. So I think that's kind of why, I mean, that's why I started City in Color in the first place was I had all these other songs, you know, and then it was like, I would do that. And then Alexis, we'd make a record. And then yeah. by that, by the time that was done, I'd have another batch of songs. And, and even if I should go, like we, we did the tour for the hurry and the harm. And I had hired this new group of dudes to play with me. And that tour was so great for two years that while I was, while I was on that tour, I just had this wealth of creative energy that showed up and I wrote all these songs that I wanted to make with these new guys that were playing with me. Right. So that just wasn't there when I finished. When did it come back? After I, uh, after I made that record with Ben Rogers. You um, produced a record. Yeah. Yeah. My, my friend Carl and I, we made that record with those, those guys and it just sort of you know, and I, I don't want to say like I didn't have anything to write about or I didn't have the, the energy to do it. It was just, it just sort of went, went away for a bit. But being in the studio and, and listening to Ben's songs just got me rejuvenated to want to be creative in my own, my own way. Yeah, and, I, I'm, and I'm not about to start a conversation about God, but it does... I can't, I, I have lots of opinions. I, I, I went to school. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I've spoken to songwriters who have who have said that to me as well that like i've spoken to songwriters like who've said like i just i write every day and something's going to come out but it is it is funny dallas that yeah. it just kind of arrives it makes you think about something bigger right like this, right and i'm not a, i'm not a bulk writer like like those people yeah i do not write every day i never have it was even when i'm saying i i know i put out a lot of music yeah i still go through periods of months where i'm like i, I don't think i'm ever going to write again and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I've got an album. What's that? I don't know. It's just, if I, I always say this, if I wrote as much as I thought about writing, <laughs> I'd probably have three times as many. Right. But, but it just hits you, right? It just, you get that. Uh, I have this strange, like, fear of writing the wrong thing. And, and, and that the wrong thing is my wrong thing. Not, it's not right or wrong. It's just, um, even when I, like, when I made that record with Alicia, that was. This is the pink, the pink the record. The You and Me record. Yeah. It was Lovely. insane to watch the way she writes because, you know, I show up with, with a bunch of voice notes and like a book of words or phrases I've been writing, collecting for like, two years, and I start playing them for her and she's just sitting there writing, 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 writing. She's not afraid to write the wrong thing down. Mm. I have this like fear that I'm going to look at the book the next day and go, oh, why did I write that? Is, you know? is the right thing the most honest thing? I don't know. It's just whatever it is that day. Just whatever feels right deep yeah, inside. Yeah, exactly. Because this is, I mean, to talk about the, the richness of the lyricism on this record, I was, um, I want to talk a bit about that because a pill, a pill for loneliness is a real pill, right? It's, uh, well, I believe they're, they're, they're working, working on it. it. And that's why, that's what kind of sparked the name of the record. 
Isn't that interesting? I think so, yeah. So you saw like a, a news? I saw a news program and there was, a, yeah, it was about these scientists working on a pill for loneliness because they've, the research has shown that we're living in the loneliest era in the history of human civilization, which to contrast, you know, like being more connected than ever by the internet. Yeah, I texted six people on the way over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, to brag. They believe that, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I got about eight. <laughs> but they believe that um, loneliness is a, is a worse epidemic than obesity right now. And I just saw that and I was just, I just thought, you know, obviously we want to make a cure for everything nowadays. Um, nobody seems to want to deal with anything. They just want to be able to pop a pill or, you know, put a lotion on and everything is fine. Mm. But that's just not the way life is, you know? And I think just for me, being a bit of a romantic about certain things, I just thought, well, music has always been that for me and I'm so lucky. Whether it's writing my own or listening to it, there was a young person, you know, music was like, I remember that like moment when I was like 12 and I, I heard a song and I was like, oh my God, it sounds like they're saying what I'm thinking. And, you know, it could have been like Lane Staley, Vows and Chains writing about heroin, a heroin addiction. But for me, whatever, the way he's saying it and the way he said it, it was like, it was what I was feeling. And so that to me was, it makes you feel less alone, I think. I think so too. I think that's the best thing that music does. Yeah. But when you're the one playing the music, it's interesting. Because when I was listening to this record, I was thinking a lot about that. I was thinking a lot about how we're always on our phones and yet we feel so lonely. And I thought about the life of someone like you, like a touring musician, which looks like this to me. You're on stage and there's a couple of thousand people out there who love you. And it sounds like you're surrounded by people that love you. Yeah. And you're surrounded by a band that, you know, loves you. Sounds great. And you can be lonely. Yeah, absolutely. Like you can still, that's what I heard on this record was you still feeling lonely while all these beautiful things are happening. Yeah, and it's a, it's a strange thing because it's one of those like... Um, Again, it's it's a human, it's human nature to feel everything, to feel sadness and happiness, to feel like you don't know what one is without the other. So, you know, you can do this. Like I'm I'm lucky because I get to do this thing that I actually love more than anything, but that doesn't mean it's always good. Do you like being on the road? I do. Yeah, it's the only thing I've done for the last twenty years. Um, but it's like anything. There's really good days on the road. There's really bad days. There's amazing shows, and there's shows that make you want to never do it again. Yeah. You know, but it's just about getting up and doing it again because that's life. And there's, I mean, especially on the first track on the record, that's what I heard on that, is like, I want, I, I, I kind of want to have both worlds. Like, yeah. I want to have this home, and a home like my friends have, my, yeah. my, my college friends have, my high school friends have. Right. And then I, but I, I kind of need this and I, and I also want this. And those two things are. Yeah, it's so, about, that song's about the repercussions of, of the life I live. Um, you know, it's about the fractured relationships that I have with the people in my family and my life that because of what I do takes me away from them. And then there's a strange thing when, you know, I talk to people and they'll be like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I was 16 years old. I'm playing guitar and I'm singing. Yeah. And, you know, my, all my friends that I'm still friends with from high school, they've, you know, had different careers and kids and marriages and this and that. And it's almost like when you become a, when you get to do this, you put, you, it's like you want to hit pause on a VCR. VCR, I just said. Yeah, it's like, it's all right, buddy. VCR. Watch this, watch this edit point. You hit pause on a DVD player. Yes, exactly. Or on Netflix. On Netflix. Right. You hit pause. I, 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 I didn't on, even do great when I had a second chance at it. Yeah. There you go. But, you know, and you leave and you go do this thing that's the same thing, just in a different place. And then you come home and everything has changed. Except you're not. Or you don't think you are. You, you know, you just unpack your suitcase. And what does that do in the long run? I don't know. I'm, start, I'm trying to deal with that right now, actually, yeah. after, you know, 10 records and... 15 years really of solid touring yeah um and again it's not about complaining about it i'm i'm more thankful than and, and know how lucky i am to have been able to do it it's still there's not like a perfect answer for you know what comes afterwards as i mentioned the the, the richness of this record is something that really um 
hit me, and we talked a, bit, a little bit about the lyrical richness. I think even sonically, Dallas, it was it was jammy. Sure, like yeah. it was it was heavy. It was really textured. Do you feel like you did something different here? Yeah, we definitely did. What were you um, trying? Was was it intentional? Was we, it was. Yeah, I think when I first started demoing the tunes, I did notice. You know, I mean, I, I tend to write pretty melancholic songs. I'm sure people know that by now. But I sort of noticed that it was more, it was a heavier, the songs were heavier lyrically. Um, I think Heavier I was, lyrically, like I about think, heavier things in yeah, your life. Yeah, I think, you know, a, a lot of my records have just been about things in my own life. Um, but I think I was sort of, I think I was writing about the world as a whole. You know, my opinion of it or my observation of it after traveling around it for all this time. And I started to, you know, whether that's my age or I don't know what that is, but I just started to notice it was, every song was kind of, I also think that's kind of why it took so long because I, when I first started writing groups of songs, I didn't know if they was too heavy and I didn't know if I wanted to make a whole record like that. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, I'm just gonna, this is what's coming out of me. Yeah, but what were you worried about? I don't, well, I didn't know if I wanted to make a whole record about how lonely we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, I, but it's sort of halfway through it, I just sort of embraced it. But I think at first I was gonna, I had this idea that it would be a really quiet, somber record. But then as I started making the demos, and when I make demos, I make them all by myself. And then like, you know, I would send them to Carl and, and then we'd start talking about it. And, and then when Jakir got involved, that's when we really just like, we started to just talk about making like a real vibrant, beautiful record to kind of juxtapose the, the nature of what the songs were about. Mm -hmm. um, a sprawling. A sprawling. Yeah. And I'd never made a record that way either. And I wanted to. I've always like been a fan of. Well, you're kind of like, um, I was going to say you're kind of like Neil Young. But I think because the way, I got introduced to your music in a way that I think most people didn't is that um, like it was through your cover of Cowgirl in the Sand. Okay. And I was just the biggest Neil, you know, I mean, I am maybe outside of you the biggest Neil Young. No, no, he did true. yell at me recently. Did he? I got that, but yeah. Like Good he, for you. Yeah, thank you. I wore headphones in the studio. He didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't like anything. He's not crazy about anything, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it is a bit of a feather in my cap. I'm glad you caught that, yeah, that he yelled absolutely. at me. Um, and I, and I see you, I can see you in that lens. Like I can see you make these really beautiful acoustic records the same way that Neil could make like Harvest and, and Harvest Moon. And then I see you making Crazy Horse records, like big sprawling trans records. Yeah. And that's what this record felt like to me. Well, it felt like you're showing off what else you can do here. He, he's sort of always been my, uh, you know, the thing I look to with his career is he's just done whatever he's wanted to do. And you know, think again, being lucky enough to have the freedom to try different stuff and also that people have come along with me, you know? And you know, he's got that quote, I'm gonna paraphrase it and I'm gonna butcher it a little bit, but when he talks about after he made, you know, Harvest and realized that he was sort of going down the middle of the road and he sort of needed to veer off into the ditch. Swing into the ditch, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, he lost a lot of fans, but he also, everybody kind of went with him too. And I think, you know, at some point, or maybe even early on, I mean, after, after like two Alexis on Fire records and then I put out the first Sitting Color record, it was like, hey, everybody, I'm into some different stuff. So, you know, occasionally I'm, I'm, I'm going to want to make a really, you know, loud, screamy song. Occasionally I want to be quiet. Occasionally I want to hang out with my friend who happens to be the biggest pop star in the world because mm -hmm. we like each other and we can sing. Mm -hmm. And then with this record, it was like, I love all that. I love those sounds. Uh, and I wrote these songs and my friends helped, thought, you know, I think we can, I think we can make one of these records with these tunes. And so we tried to. Does it get harder to do whatever you want to do as it gets bigger? Because I don't think anyone, you, like, I don't think you could have predicted how big this thing has gotten. No, I, have, I could never have. I mean, we're, I mean, look at this, we're standing in this room that's like built on us taking chances. Um, so as it, gets, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and, and either there's more people relying on you or there's just more people, is it, is it harder to do your own thing? No, because I've never, 
I've never thought about what somebody's going to say about it. Um, wow. and, and I don't mean that in like an egotistical no, it's, it's, way. No, I just it's, mean it's, I just have never done. I've never done that. And I, I think that because of the way everything started, us making music that we, we literally thought no one would listen to. If that worked, then basically I'll just try anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't rely on. I'm very appreciative that some people relate to what I'm doing, but I don't rely on it f to make me create, if that makes sense. That's, that's all you. That's all your own. Yeah, it's the pressure. You know, people ask about pressure, and that's no, I, the only pressure I, that exists is the pressure I put on myself. Is that a lot of pressure? Yeah, absolutely. I bet. It's a ton. Yeah. But that's because I just want to feel like I'm doing the right thing. Again, that's the fear of writing the wrong thing down. That's my wrong thing, mm -hmm. you know? Dallas, you mentioned Carl a few times. I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah, thank you. I just want to I want to fill people in who are who are listening to this. We're talking about Carl Barum. You called him Wolf, right? Horse. Horse. Yeah. My mistake. Sorry about it's that. It's okay. I actually have a friend we call Wolf too. His last name is Wolf, but that's good. It's a solid idea to call yeah, that guy Wolf. Wolf. Yeah. So Carl Barum, um, um, in a in a tragic accident. Um, how are you doing? Day to day. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it's it's something that. No, none of us could have ever imagined. And uh, it's hard because, you know, for the last, I mean, he toured with us and me for, you know, about 15 years, but the last six years, we'd been like making records together, you know, so we made If I Should Go together and then the live record I put out, like he recorded all of that. And then we made this new record and he recorded the last Alexis on Fire tunes. So it's a strange thing where, you know, this not only is it my friend who passed away, but it's like this person who I'd spent every day on tour with. And the bulk of the music I've created in the last six years, not the bulk, all of it, um, was with him too. So um, it's a strange thing to be up on stage playing, uh, not only singing these songs that I made with Carl, but he was my monitor engineer too, so he's not. He, I'm used to looking over and him being there too. So, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely been hard because it happened right before the record came out, and then we had to go on tour. It, there's no reflection time. It, yeah, on and tour. I'm just sort of starting to deal with that now. Like I've made a bunch of changes because I've realized it's something I have to work through, and all of us, you know, all of my family on the road, like it, you know, he was our basically our brother. We're all brothers. And what kind of changes? Uh, I just needed to quiet stuff down, uh, you know. Oh, this is, so the, you, I think you put a post up on. Yeah. This is that, yeah. Yeah, because I, I you're, just. You're slimming down the band. You're, yeah, and it was just to, just to create more, si kind of more silence, like we were talking about earlier before off camera. Um, you know, because it is a, it's a tragedy and it's trauma for all of us. And we went right to work and it was good that we were all together. But. Um, it, I just found it very difficult on the last, t the two tours we just did, I just found it very difficult to focus on anything. Uh, and this, like I said, it's not like you're losing your friend who passed away at home and you're, you're thinking about it occasionally. It's like every minute of every day we're thinking about him not being there and then playing, he's not there and I'm singing these songs and yeah. Every, every moment of the day every is, is, is a thing where he was supposed to be. Yeah. And you know, I, I often talk about like hearing a joke and texting to someone and then realizing you can't, but that times every action, every movement, everything. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. So it's just a, it's a process that, you know, and I'm not one to, I don't know. I, I don't think, you know, there was a moment there where I thought maybe I should just cancel everything and really take a moment, a moment. But then I thought, well, then I'm just going to be sad by myself. You know, we're all going to be sad by ourselves. We might as well try to be sad together and yeah, sort of use it to talk to each other about it. But um, someone told me the day it, it felt like they saw the show and they said they felt like you were working through it. They, they felt like they saw you working through it on stage. Yeah, and I am. I'm, I'm absolutely doing that. And the, the, again, very thankful and lucky that I have this thing that I can. Uh, and I've always used music that way. You know, I've, it's just a strange. It's one of those things where you think about life and you go, well, this is not fair. You know, how did I just make a record called The Pill for Loneliness with my best friend and now he 
he dies a week before it comes out. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just like, it doesn't make any sense really. Yeah. But not a lot does. What, what was he like? He was very quiet. Uh, he was a prick, a beautiful <laughs> English quiet prick. Um, but just incredibly talented, you know, and you would never have really known about it because he's not, wasn't one to really like talk about it. So, you know, like I said, like I, we, the first time Alexis on Fire went over to England, we went by ourselves. We didn't have any money to pay for a crew. Mm -hmm. And the promoter gave us a tour manager. You know, we didn't really even know what that was. Mm -hmm. His name was John Dawkins. And then the second time we went back, we we went with another band and we split a tour bus and John tour managed both bands and he was like, I know a guy who can do sound for cheap from here. And that was Carl. And that from that moment on, he, he ended up working with Alexis and then came and worked with me and he would come and go because he had his own bands and stuff here and there. And then, yeah, about six years ago, we after I made the, well, I was touring making uh, the Hurry and the Harm record. Right. And then we started thinking about what I was going to do on the next one. I always knew that he was like a Pro Tools wizard and an yeah. engineer and stuff. Yeah. But we never really talked about like making a record together. Yeah. Because I like produced a lot of stuff, co-produced with other guys. And then I just sort of had made the decision to maybe produce the record myself. And Carl was like, well, I'll, I'll help. I'll just engineer it for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, right. And then that's, that sort of started our working relationship together. And then we... You know, we made Ben's record. Ben Rogers' record. Ben Rogers' record. And that was like our first time doing something that wasn't mine. Mm. And that was a beautiful thing because we were like, oh, wow, we can just do this now. Yeah. So it was, you know, there was, it's hard. It's just. Yeah. I mean, losing someone suddenly too. You don't get, you don't get those months to prepare yourself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's, the, the, that's the worst of it, you know. I mean, I, I think we like to think that we'd like to go that way. Yeah. But it's so hard on the people it's who are the, left Yeah, the people. And, and, and knowing him too, the, I think the hardest part is knowing that he would be, he would be very pissed off to know how big of a fuss everyone's making about oh, yeah, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Had you canceled that tour, he would have been pissed off. Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd be pissed off about this whole thing. Yeah, last time I saw you was at the Junos. I see you're wearing the Downey Wenjack yeah. pin and you, were, you played Bob Cajun yeah. for Gord. Yeah. There's another friend you lost. Yeah. Tell me about that moment. What was that like? It was a very, very tough moment. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. We were all kind of crying in the dressing room before, and then, you know, all I, I just didn't want to fuck it up. Pardon my language again, but That's right. that was a, a big thing. I was like, well, you know, what if I? This is such an, it's such a strange moment. You know, like everybody kept saying to me, like, you know, like this is amazing that you're doing this, and I was like, I don't want to be here doing this. You know. Uh, that's not the type of thing you want to do. You yeah. don't want to be singing a song to honor your friend who's passed away. You're not happy about it. You're not happy, but I'm 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 honored to do it. Mm -hmm. But you're not happy. You about don't it. want to be there. No. Um. But I remember the moment, like right before, I'm, they're gonna make me cry because I'm looking at them. But right before I was about to go on, I like turned and Christina and Trisha, my longtime publicist and friend and friends and manager, and my wife were standing there. And I, I like looked at them and I was like about to, and they were like, no. And they turned me around and just like sent me out. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, they and just, I did they it. They gave you a push. Yeah. And then I, I went uh, back to the dressing room and I just cried for a while in the bathroom. And then Christina came and knocked on the door and said, Dal, do you want to, do you want to come talk to Getty Lee? And I was like, yes. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to do that. And I went and talked to Getty Lee about the Blue Jays for a while. And that, that cheered me up. That'll make you feel better. Yeah, absolutely. I still always look for him. Yeah. Scoring the game. Yeah. And we wondered if I could ever get those seats one of these days. Oh, I know. He, I remember nice. again, he told me that he was, we were talking about the lineup and he was like, yeah, I texted Gibby the other day and I was like, excuse me? Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. And he was like, yeah, no, I've texted. I was like, you have, you text, you text Gibby about the lineup? Mm -hmm. I think we're going to do all right this yeah. year. People, I think so too. I, I know they say we're a contender. I think we're going to do very well. And Boston just traded away Mookie Betts. Yeah, I can't afford him, I guess. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I think it has to do with their... We don't know what they're going to be penalized yet for their... Yeah, for the, for the cheating, yeah. So I think they're just trying to save some money. Um, back to the Junos. Yeah. When you won that Songwriter of the Year award, I feel like that 
Uh, how do I say this in a way that you can keep it for the Junos? I feel like that award means more to artists than the other ones do. I feel like that award means a lot, maybe I'll just say. I think so. I mean, to, I guess it would depend on who you ask, you know? I'm sure some people want to be like yeah. artist of the year or... I think to I you. don't really take stock in any of those things, you know? But to win the Songwriter of the Year award was, was nice because that's something that's important to me. Like I said earlier, like the, the fame and all that stuff, I, I don't, it's just not, it just, I don't think about it. It doesn't, people say, oh, you're famous. I, I'm not. I think fame is something you have to choose. You have to decide that you're famous. I just write songs. Some people like them, some people don't, you know? So for me, to, to be recognized by, for the songwriting, which is the most important thing in, for me, always has been, um, that was nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the Junos themselves, they're a fun event too. It's cool, you know, yeah. but it's again, you can't, I don't think, and again, it all depends on what you want out of this. Yeah. You know, and um, I think you can't put too much stock in one, being one way or the other, like being, if you get, if you do this because you want awards or you do this and you can't handle negative reviews, then you're lost. You but, know? but I feel like your, your gift, at least to me personally, has always been bringing, like, as I mentioned, richness and like artistry to environments where I wouldn't expect it. Like whether that be like, you know, there's a lot of videos on much music, but the Alexis video caught me off guard and that song mm -hmm. caught me off guard. Um, there were a lot of people strumming acoustic guitars, but that caught me off guard. It felt different. And I remember at the Songwriters Circle in St. John's, you hosted the Juno Songwriters Circle. Yeah. And it was great and it was fine. People were singing songs. I don't really remember a whole lot of it, except that you played Grinning in Your Face. Yeah. Great song. Sunhouse? Sunhouse. One of the greatest ever pieces of recorded anything. Yes. And I feel like that summarized what I, what, I, what I think of you as, as someone who can find themselves in these situations which aren't conducive to art or to emotion or truth and can sneak it in. Well, I think, you know, we're, when you talk about the music business, it's a business, you know, and it's a lot of the people that run it have no interest in art at all. Mm -hmm. They just have interest in, it, it's a commodity, right? It's like, and that's okay. That's the way of the world we live in. Um, but I'm just thankful that, you know, we, we've always done things on our own terms and I don't, we don't, I don't have anybody to, to answer to. So I think, um, you know, just trying to do whatever I feel is, is right or what is good. Like, and again, that's my opinion, whatever. Like some people will be like, what's that Sunhouse? I don't like that or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you have the, if you have like the, the avenue to, to do it, then why not, you know, in a way? If you, if you can bring and like, some, again, yeah. it's like this, you know, this all started in, in like a little, a little office on Beach Street in St. Catharines, Ontario, where we were like, you know, my two friends were like, yeah, I'll help you. And that's what we still do, you know. Yeah, and here we are. Here we are in this big, weird building with them, you know. And so I think that's part of it, though, is, is having the freedom to sort of try different stuff or do what I want and, and hope that it lands. And if it doesn't, that's okay too, you know? It's been nice talking to you. You too, man. Thanks for this. Nice Thanks. to finally meet. Yeah. And now we don't have to pretend we met each other. Yeah, now we've really met. Now we can do it. I'll say, I remember it was a dine alone. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Dallas. Thanks. I really appreciate it. <laughs>